is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Inspired By. My name is Will and I make an assortment of music under the moniker Hush Child. You guys asked for me to highlight another artist that has a plethora of music under their belt but today we're going to focus on their earlier discography with the likes of Idealism. Yes, I'm speaking about the producer Swam. With just under a million monthly listeners we have a lot to cover so let's dive into it. Ideally, I would have liked to cover everything that Swam has created during his time on Spotify. His new track, Nova with One Heart, who's an artist that we've covered in a previous episode, so do make sure you check that out, is absolutely amazing. But today we're going to focus more on the kind of chill hot beat tape sessions and his most famous single, With You. So let's dive into it. In the track With You, there's some drums that have an absolutely lovely sound design. And I've tried to replicate something fairly similar right here. So what we have here is a drum rack with several hi-hats on them. These hi-hat one-shots are actually from my friend Dokodo for his Comma Rebi sample pack on Splice. I just trimmed those hi-hats down a little bit, pitched them slightly and played them on the first four keys of my MIDI keyboard. I played these hi-hats in by hand because I wanted them to stay unquantized with that swing groove and be fairly unique in their velocity patterns as well. Now I should mention that all of my drums are in this master drum group and this has a little bit of shaper box on it. I'm just using the noise shaper. You can see that I've high passed a lot of the noise and just taken that low pass down to about 11.5 kilohertz. And this is adding the jar of pens preset to any signal that is ran through that drum group. I've turned the amount mix way down so that kind of jangly pen sound only comes through as ear candy every now and then in the mix. We've also got a little bit of EQ8 just to kind of tidy up the drum group. Moving on, I've got a kick drum. Nothing too fancy here, just a Mali Raw kick. I've used it in previous videos. It's just playing a very simple pattern. Haven't done too much to it because it sounds lovely already. I've said before, you don't always have to compress, limit, master your one shots. If they're coming from a website like Splice, nine times out of 10, they're sounding great as they are. So I've just got a little bit of EQ so it sits better within the context of my song. Okay, so here's the fun bit, the snares. They're actually more like rim shots and here's my first sample. It's a very simple clean sound and just underneath slightly flammed what that means is slightly offset. I've got another sample here and that's just giving that snare a little bit of a tone and then I've got something slightly brighter just as a transient sound underneath. Just a little rim shot there. So for the processing, what I'm doing is adding the Waves H Comp. This is a really lovely plugin that adds a little bit of punch to my snare, just pulls it out of the mix. EQ in that snare just to tidy it up. And then I'm adding the Phaser Flanger device on this Article Alliance preset. And you can also see that I'm automating three of the parameters underneath. I have a fairly slow curve throughout the track here, which is going to keep my snare's frequency changing as the track progresses. After this, I've got another phaser flanger, but this time set to the doubler effect. Changing these parameters throughout gives us that weird kind of bubbly snare effect. Another thing that you want to do is add another EQ at the end to roll off some of the lows. You get a lot of low end sub there. So we're just rolling that off and keeping that snare nice and tight. The last part of my kind of rhythmical section is just a little bit of percussive ear candy from these metal samples that I found on Splice. There's nothing particularly intricate going on with these, just a nice rhythmical pattern that adds to the hi-hat flavor and ear candy of my drums. Let's put everything you've just heard all together. Okay, so I want to show you this really simple chord progression. In a lot of Swam's music, they keep the chord progressions quite simple. And I've heard a few tracks where there's just two chords being used. So I've started my track with the same chord as with you, and it sounds like this. And here's my second chord. The most important thing with this chord progression is that back and forth feeling. You want to start on something that sounds really quite triumphant and complete. And then you want something with a little bit of tension afterwards. 
and that means when it loops again, we've come full circle. Now the sound that I'm using is the Electric 200 from Waves. I think this is a lovely instrument with lots of roads like sounds on it, but you can just use the standard electric preset if you're in Ableton and you don't have this device. I'm using a little bit of Valhalla reverb. Again, you can just use the standard reverb. Wash that sound out a little bit. I've just got 20% on the mix there and I'm using Lifeline console to give it a little bit of that kind of vinyl warping sound. And again, if you don't have this, you can use RC20, Isotope Vinyl, or if you're on my Patreon, you can download the low fire effects rack i keep it pinned at the top of the profile there's plenty of other goodies over that way as well so for this i'm keeping my chord progression the same throughout however at this point in the song i do change it slightly just from these rolled notes to something that's a little bit more blocky And that's really gonna help with my lead line. At the beginning of this track, the lead line stays pretty simple. And then over towards this area where it changes, it's a little bit more busy. So you wanna keep those chords as block chords. This is what the lead line sounds like alone. Keeping that velocity really low down. Super quiet at minus 10. And if we put those together, it sounds like this. So at this point I had my main pattern. Everything else needed to stay quite simple because this was just lovely on its own. Works as a really nice introduction to the song. So then I moved on to bass. When you're setting up the bass for a track like this, I find it easiest just to set out two notes, one above playing the root note and one below as the chords move. And then after that, you can fill in any musical gaps with a more melodic bass sound. All I'm using for the bass sound is the electric bass open preset in Ableton and just rolling it off ever so slightly. It's got lots of character. I didn't really need to do too much else. If it was a track I was releasing, maybe a little bit of glue compression and perhaps waves R bass. You know, I love that plugin. I've run back to my old friend RK because way, way, way in the bottom of the track, I could hear a little bit of vocal goodness. So I've used this in my video with Mondo Loops. Make sure you check it out. It's probably one of my favorite episodes that I've made. I'm using the Eternal Dreams preset from Distant voices in arcade. I'm just using these long legato notes and setting it to the tracks key, which I think is E major, but I might be wrong there. And you can probably hear that I'm really rolling off the lows with the EQ there, leaving a lot of that kind of breath sound. And then we're just setting that to mono because I'm also using the lab's choir to add a little bit of width with the vocals as well. So with the free lab's choir, I'm adding automation with the auto pan. That's gonna take it from more of a straight legato sound to something that sounds slightly side-chained or gated. Using the utility gain automation, just to make sure that that kind of rises in dynamic. A little bit of Valhalla Vintage Verb, a line delay, like I said, to make it nice and wide. We've got a pad or a vocal, sorry, that's in mono already, and then plenty of EQ. We don't want any muddiness in this track. There's plenty of warm instruments. So my melodies right now are sounding absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> go anywhere because I've got one more melodic instrument to come that's going to add a lot of organic feel to this track but I must remind you that this episode is sponsored by DistroKid. Now I put out all my music on DistroKid and they make it so easy to get your music on over 200 streaming platforms. They also make sure to update their services with things like DistroVid which you've heard me talk about before and their new platform DistroPick. AI generated images for your cover art. Do make sure you check it out once you've signed up. If you want to sign up with my affiliate link in the description below, you'll get 7% off your first year. Now let's check out this atmospheric group. So I've got to be honest, once I'd created my melodic section for this inspired by episode, I noticed that it was just really quite 
dull and dark. So kind of using some listening skills, I was focusing on the higher end of Swum's discography. And I noticed that there's plenty of atmospheric sounds from cymbal brushes to noise to digital laser sounds. There's a lot going on. So this atmospheric group was a real tightrope to try and fit everything in, but not make it too garbled and full of just random noises. Sounds kind of weird alone, right? So firstly, what we have is some cymbal sounds from Splice. EQ was super important here, keeping everything in the kind of ear candy zone of like 2K plus. We then had some chimes. That's coming in at the halfway mark, just to kind of separate everything up. Missing out a super important atmospheric there. I've got some noise on a blank track. This is also from Cable Guy's Shaper Box. Just got that noise EQ'd off there, 1.77 to 7.11 kilohertz. And I'm using the EQ8 to sweep this. I could also use the filter inside Shaper Box as well. Keeping it fairly quiet in the mix. And then probably one of my favorite sounds in this track is the digital lasers. I don't normally put the digital lasers or tweets in my tracks, but I think making this, it's kind of changed my opinion on things. It's super tasteful. You can make it yourself, and I might do that in a future shorts episode. So comment below if that's something you want to hear about. But for this example, I just took a longer sample from Splice, pitched it, and stretched it around so it was in key in with my music. And then the only thing that I made sure to do was EQ off that low end, make sure to high pass it because those kind of digital sweeps are gonna go right into those subby areas of your track. I've got a little subgroup here called Ear Candy and this Ear Candy group is mostly gonna be swept off to the 10K plus stuff and pushed out to the sideband frequencies. Starting things off, I've got just a little Foley kind of cup sound. And in 12 milliseconds with the align delay, I've got this medicine sample, making sure to warp it beats transients, forward transient marker, and then pulling that envelope all the way down to zero. That's changing it from this sound to this sound. Coupling it with this entropy kind of fizzy noise sound originally sounding like this. Little bit of volume automation there using the align delay, this time automating the align delay from a wide perspective to a more central sound as I'm automating the frequencies in the high pass as well. Makes this really nice, almost like a fizzy drink sound. Now finally in the second half, I wanted to make sure that I brought the pad volume down a little bit and introduced a new organic element. I've been loving the Fink acoustic guitar from Spitfire here, and I'm just using the Brady thumb notes. Super high passed off, a little bit of a line delay, tiny bit of our Haller vintage verb as well. Side chaining it to my lead electric piano because I don't want these things to clash. And then finally an EQ8 just to roll off some of the frequencies, the muddy frequencies from the Val Haller earlier. Now I've played it in live and left it unquantized. So it sounds like this. And if we add that to my chords, it adds just a nice little flavor to the track. It's nice and low in the mix. It's also panning from left to right. Keep it nice and quiet in the mix. See what it sounds like with the whole track. So that's my video taking inspiration from Swum guys. Do let me know how I did in the comments below. Let me know what you've been up to. Join me on the Discord. There is a beat battle coming next Sunday to the Discord as well. So make sure you get involved because I've got a really nice prize coming your way. Don't forget to give me some ideas as to what you want to see in future episodes as well. I thank you so much for swinging by and I'll see you next time.